It's time for This Week in WordPress, episode number 166, entitled, Look How Dry the Wood Is! How Do You Not Even Use That? It was recorded on Monday the 7th of June 2021. My name's Nathan Wrigley, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host Paul Lacey. Today, we're also joined by Jennifer Bourne and Joe Casabona to talk about the WordPress news for this week. There's a lot to talk about. WordCamp Europe is starting this week, and so we look at the schedule and what's on and what's exciting us for this week. Also, the Yoast Diversity Fund has been opened up so that more people can apply for it. Paul leads us into a story about how agencies are embracing Gutenberg, which then leads to a conversation in which Jennifer tells us all about the products and services that she offers in the WordPress space to help agencies. Then we talk about block patterns, and we touch on a video that Joe made on YouTube this week explaining how you can set up your very own block patterns. Then we get into two acquisitions. Firstly, ACF has been bought by Delicious Brains. What does that mean and how did the community react? And we also talk about how Iconic WP has been bought by Stella WP, making it a very fine offering. And then one final story at the end. We talk a little bit about Elementor. It's all coming up next on This Week in WordPress. This Week in WordPress was brought to you by AB Split Test. Do you want to set up your AB Split Test in record time? The new AB Split Test plugin for WordPress will have you up and running in a couple of minutes. Use your existing pages and test anything against anything else. Buttons, images, headers, rows, anything. And the best part is that it works with Elementor, Beaver Builder, and the WordPress block editor. Go check it out and get a free demo at absplittest.com. Hello, 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 good afternoon, welcome, welcome back to WP Builds this week in WordPress episode 7 trillion 304, uh, so it feels like that sometimes. We are joined today with a really nice panel, this is going to be a really nice show I feel, we've got quite a lot to discuss, there's been quite a bit of a bit of a WordPress controversy this week to discuss, we'll, uh, we'll try to keep things calm, I'm not going to get inflamed and all overwrought though, we're going to you know, maintain our calm during this, but um, as always I'm joined by Paul Lacey, my co-host, and I'm going to hand it over to him to, uh, to introduce himself and then introduce mm -hmm. the other panellists today. Did you hear that strange noise I just made then? Instead no. of saying hello, I just went, and a, and a weird noise came out. No. Said, so. no. No. <laughs> it's a but good for those start. Of you, for those of you <laughs> listening on audio, Paul just made a weird noise. <laughs> it was supposed to be the word hello, and then it just went totally wrong. So I think I'm ready to speak now. So okay. I just want to introduce the uh, guest today. And Jennifer, first of all, it's great to meet you finally. I know um, I've been following you on Twitter and seeing you on lots of events and stuff. So it's great to have you on the show for the first time. And to give you a little bit of an intro, uh, Jennifer Bourne helps small businesses build brands, create content and grow profitable online platforms. And she's best known for her, her business systems, family adventures and waffles and shares everything she's learned through business mentorship, training programs like Profitable profitable project plan and events like content camp. So I want to just quickly ask you about the waffles. Is that like parks and recreations type waffles? Like um, if you watch that TV show, do you watch parks and recreation? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, I, we just started wondering, it came from my husband not wanting me to use the oven in the summer when it's like 110 degrees and we want to make brownies. And he's like, no, we're not mm -hmm. turning the oven on. And we thought, well, can we make, can we make these in the waffle iron, right? I saw something on social and then it was like, well, what else can we put in here? Everything, everything can go in there. <laughs> Do you know, it's yeah. interesting because although we're very, very similar, North America and us in Britain, we are also very different. Um, like nobody here has waffles. You'd be really, I'd be surprised if anybody that, we, that I've ever spoken to has eaten a waffle recently. And also, See, you I said haven't a, eaten a, a regular waffle in probably <laughs> three years. Okay. But if it, if it is like, if it's a dough or a batter or anything like that, it can get cooked in there. And okay. it's so much faster. You look at brownies go in the oven for like 45 minutes or something like that. You can pop the brownie batter in your waffle iron and it's done in three. I'm liking it. I don't yeah, even know no. what a waffle iron is. I'm guessing a waffle iron is like a clamp that goes down yeah. and like, okay, yep. got it. 
You can get them in the UK. You can tend to get them, Nathan, at things like artisan foodery type stalls at oh, festivals and stuff like that. Okay. But they're not they're not super po popular here. And any, anyway, I mean, Jennifer, sorry to uh, focus on the, the complete non business aspect to your entire profile. But if you're going to put waffle in there, then I'm gonna I'm gonna spot that and pull it out. I'll talk but, um, about that any day. Yeah, nice. well, we will get to some of your business stuff as well. But we, just to let you know, we have waffles here, but they're completely different things. Uh, in in the UK, waffles are basically like potato potato fries, but in a kind of square shape with holes yeah. in the middle. Waffle yeah. fries. Also. Yeah, that's what we, that's what we have. Yeah, we love waffle fries. Is this the same as like pudding in America is like chocolate, and pudding in the UK is like bread and vegetables or something like that? No, no, pudding in the UK <laughs> is pudding in the UK is anything that you eat after your main course. So basically, you'd say dessert. the word dessert. We say that a proportion uh. of the people say dessert. And that, that word is fully understood, and a, a proportion of the people say pudding, and that word is fully mm. understood. It's completely gotcha. interchangeable. Also, but, you can say dinner, and it means exactly the same thing as tea. So tea time and dinner time are the exact same yeah. thing. Um, and we have gravy, and it's brown, and put, you put it on meat. Yeah, so yeah, we have yeah. that, except I'm Italian, so gravy is also meat sauce. Did we talk like about red gravy meat. last time? Well, I feel <laughs> that we spoke about gravy last time Joe was on. That's so weird. Um, right, well, so we carry on probably then. On that, on that bombshell, um, introduce Joe then, uh, <laughs> which thankfully he has no food references in his uh, introductions text here. He's learned from last time probably. But so Joe Casabona, Joe, good to have you back. And you are a podcaster, educator, and WordPress developer, and you can find everything he does at Casabona.org. Thank you, thank Casa you. Casabona or Casabona? Casabona. Casa, um, uh, again, if I'm if I'm bringing out the Italian, it's Casabona. That's how like all the Italians say it, and then they immediately follow with the English translation, which is good house. So, oh, Casa yeah. House, yeah, got it. Casa, Casa and Bona. then Bona, yeah. good house. Yeah. yeah, my my name is my surname is Wrigley, which literally means nothing. Gum. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it means gum. That's, um, apparently, it comes from uh, there was a, a small collection of like a little tribe of people who lived near a rig a river called the River Wriggle. You see, going back into like the Middle Ages. So, if you were from that tribe, you were one of the Wrigleys because you were near the River nice. Wriggle. But um, yeah. So on this week in waffles, we'll um, we'll finally <laughs> Joe nearly spat. Um, we we'll actually get some proper WordPress news. We are, of course going to be talking about WordPress. And just before I put that article up, which I shouldn't have had on first stop, um, WP Builds, head over to wpbuilds.com if you want to find out all the stuff that we produce. We do this show each week. So if you're listening to this on audio, you could come back next week, 2 p.m. UK time, and we'll have another live show. We also do a podcast episode. We're up to episode 232 of that. And David Wormsley and I were speaking about site loading and speeding up your WordPress sites. But, but, but this week, we've got a little laundry list. We've probably got about seven or eight little articles that we're going to try and cover off. And uh, I think I'm up for the first one. By the way, um, I do apologize. It has just started what can only be described as hail, really seriously heavy hail. And I've got some decorators who were outside a moment ago, and they've just come into my house, and they're going to start banging things. So if that happens, I do apologize. There's not much I can do about it. Um, WordCamp Europe finally has come around. I'm really excited about this event this year. Um, I've been lucky enough to be selected as one of the media sp uh, partners, so this is one of, the, one of the things that I need to do is mention it as often as possible. So I'm encouraging everybody. Basically, if you're watching this, you are now in conflict. You, if you're watching this, you, you can either watch this or go and start the opening remarks on WordCamp Europe. But um, I've got to say, I logged onto it this morning, and they've got a proprietary SaaS platform. It's called something like Hoobliss or something like that, and it looks like a really neat setup. It looks like the event itself is going to be really nicely done. There's a really nice chat widget. You can sort of go and create hangout areas and all that kind of stuff. But the main focus for me today is to draw your attention to this page, which is at europe.wordcamp.org forward slash 2021 forward slash schedule. And it's what you might expect. It is just the, the schedule on the two tracks starting basically now. And I'm going to encourage you to just go here, have a look. There's a massive load on during the course of the next three days, just about any topic you could imagine under the sun is going to be on here. I don't know if either of you two are speaking. I should have asked that before we began the call. Um, 
Jennifer or Joe? No? And you're not, are you, Paul? Not on this one, no. No, okay. But that's my encouraging words. Go and check it out. Uh, if you are in any way, shape, or form connected with WordPress, this is the biggest event that there is in the WordPress space, certainly in the live thing. Who knows? Maybe this time next year we'll get back to doing it in proper in-person event. But it looks like the platform that they've got is best in class. So don't be put off if you've had experiences in the past where the event turned out to be a bit of a damp squib. This looks like it's going to be a real hit. Anybody attending anything this week? Anybody bookmarked anything for this week? I think the the thing that I'm looking forward to most is there are several different talks that are all focused around using uh, the block editor and really focused around helping people figure out how to do more with the core blocks. Right there's so many people that talk about all the different plugins to add, all these other things. And I appreciate like Fabian Kagi's doing uh, doing one on on more focused around really looking at how you can leverage those core blocks. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Yep. Uh, I'm excited for the full site editing stuff. Um, you know, I'm working on the update to my Gutenberg course. So any insight I can get as I roll that out is going to be exciting. And also, a uh, shout out to my friend Katie Richards, who is speaking on Tuesday at uh 1505 yeah I, I saw her name and i i have not confirmed this with her but i don't know that she's spoken at a word camp before uh so <gasps> i again exciting. i don't um, i don't recall seeing her name on the schedule so shout out to katie richards and congrats on the word camp your speaking gig i feel these are this is a really nice way if you're not if you're not familiar with public speaking and i'm familiar with public speaking in this environment uh, i've never really stood up at a word camp event and stood in front of a crowd because i know for a fact that it, i would be really shaken by that it would terrify me and i would actually physically shake but i feel like if you've not done it before this this online version of things is a really good way to sort of break the ice, um, you know, get your name out there a little bit, get recognized. And then perhaps when the real things come around again, you'll have a few a few talks under your belt. But um, let's see if we can find that one. You said Tuesday, did you? Yes. Katie, I didn't do the math, but I guess that's Katie like Richards. three o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's first stop. What does yeah. CES? Is that central? CEST. Central is C S. Well, it's like we're C D T now. Oh, okay, right? we're in daylight time, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, okay, I, th I think this would be about nine a.m. or something in the UK. Okay. But um, yeah, three, three a.m., three p.m. rather, uh, where you are. So Katie Richards on tomorrow. That's lovely, and it just goes on and on. It goes on and on. There's not a lot of conflicting. Um, you know, the stuff that they put side by side, I think you, you know, you're, you're definitely going to want to pick one as opposed to the other. They've done a great job of this, and honestly. It's just just the most um, spectacular bit of organization. I think they had a bit of a hiccup this morning. Some of the emails apparently hit spam, so they quickly sent out a, an email rectifying all of that as well. But basically, go to it, europe.wordcamp.org 2021 schedule and get yourself signed up and attend. Paul, anything to add to that? I'm just going to have it on in the background listening and nice. see and look out for where the social aspects are, if there's kind of, you know, whether it's chats or or group zooms and those kind of things. And if I can make anything that's kind of the sim a similar thing to a hallway chat, uh, like hallway track, then I'll, I'll see if I can go in that, but I probably won't watch a lot of the, the talks, to be honest. I, I just want to kind of wait for the in, in real life word camps. Now I'm kind of ready, ready for that. And that's no, no, um, disrespect to any of the events that are happening and everything. And, um, and uh, I can disassociate myself from being a media partner. I'm just the co-host of this show. So <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> like I don't have all the pressure. So, yeah. Just... Yeah. That's, that's right. Yeah. Um... Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to, just going to, you know, keep tabs on it and, um, and, and listening and see what's happening because I like to keep up to date with what people are all talking about from different sizes of things, but I don't think I'll be listening intently into anything and sitting there with the screen watching. Sounds like, like Lee that. Jackson's in the same space as you. He says he's not attending. He's got seminar, seminar exhaustion at the moment. Mm -hmm. That I, I think your solution's actually perfect for that, Paul. If you have it on in the background, a bit like mm -hmm. we, we would often do with music or something is really good. And then Rick, Rick tells us they've, they've actually run out of tickets. How do you run out of tickets to an online event? Tickets are not available anymore. My registration. Oh, Rick. That would, yeah, I was talking to Rick about three minutes ago in the Facebook group, and he said his, he registered, but his ticket didn't come through. Oh, but you can follow it on YouTube. That's good. And there's how much we know. Apparently, it's Central European time. 
Uh, sorry. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> I didn't actually know that. Oh, Central European Standard Time, which is the Amsterdam Time Zone. Crikey, what a lot of comments about the time well, zone. Thank you. You is it? I, uh, maybe this is too fresh of a wound, but I don't think you need to. You're not in the EU anymore, so you don't need to uh, know about the European time zones, right? No, it's just I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not taking part in this. That, <laughs> That's it. I'm going. There's too much bad blood. Let's go. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah, that's it. No, no, we're not. We're not. The, the, the whole EU thing is gone. I actually tried to buy something the other day from a store in Germany, and it, it's it's like mics and mixing desks and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's fairly high ticket items, and the price is very attractive until you realise that there's no tax added, and they hit you at the border. Oh, uh, so yeah. and they don't even sort of make mention of it you've just got to yeah. figure that bit out for yourself uh, luckily i caught a break and didn't do that but no we are no longer in the eu um still part of europe just <laughs> not the eu yeah, yeah, yeah we, didn't, I, we didn't get our I know, paddles I know and that float much. the british isles out into the middle of the ocean yeah, yeah. i know at least that much <laughs> yeah um but fabulous event Go and check it out. You know, if you've got any misgivings, do what Paul's doing. Stick it on a stick it on a spare monitor. Have it on in the background and listen. Um, okay, should we move on to the second piece, Paul? Your Yoast Diversity Fund piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, HeroPress.com reported this, and uh, it links to the actual post on the Yoast website as well. But on HeroPress.com, uh, Topher has posted a, an article saying that um, Yoast used to offer something called a diversity fund, which they used to help people uh, unrepresented in tech to attend events like WordCamps and stuff like that, mostly WordCamps, I think. And apparently they helped 70, over 70 people join over 56 events in places like Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Europe, and Australia. And um, they said that the problem is in 2020 that that all came to a halt because there's no WordCamp. So what they've done is they figured out that they still want to help people unrepresented in tech. So they've readdressed the budget and made it more of a project budget now. So anyone can apply to this. And um, for instance, it might be, let's say you're working on a plugin or a website, or you've got a bug to fix, or you want to contribute something to uh, the WordPress core or whatever, you can apply to Yoast for a bit of money to help pay for that time that you want to do that project. And I'm assuming that when events come back in, they'll re reassess it again, and maybe they'll do a bit of um, helping people get to events and a little bit of helping people with projects. But it's just nice to see a company um, giving back in that way, directly taking cash and giving it to people to do and trust them to do what they want to do with that money, um, all in the name of moving us all forward in the community. Sorry, I've just got my mic muted because of this horrific rain. Um, I'm blaming you, Paul. The, um, the, the, uh, I think Yoast are one of these incredible companies. Obviously, obviously, you know, you could be cynical and sort of think there's yeah, it's a bit of advertising and, and what have you with all of the stuff that they do. But they they put a boatload of effort into the WordPress community. You know, they commit core developers, they second people out and really make the effort and things like this. It's just sort of like a nice bit of icing on the cake. I, there was a few people last year who I'd been in contact with who received this fund, to not last year, the year before, who, uh, who it made all the difference to getting to actual places and seeing that now you can apply on the basis of more or less anything. I think that's really nice. They didn't need to do that, but they did. And I think props to them. Well done. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could uh, apply for some money to create a new Yoast banner inside the web WordPress Stop admin it. section. Stop <laughs> it. No, we're not going there. I was, I was really fighting with myself then to not <laughs> say that. I was just like, I just can't. I just, yeah. I just need to say this. You know. it's just, just to amuse myself, nobody else. Well, you know, we all have our we all have our things, don't we? And you know, we've we've been, we've definitely done that story before. But um, yeah, okay. Unless Jennifer has got anything to say, or Joe has got anything to say, we can move on to I the think, next piece. Well, I was going to say, I think the biggest <laughs> thing that's interesting about this is with the switch. I mean, one people when you can't go to stuff, right? This makes sense to switch over to start funding projects, but contributing back and and funding some of the projects people are working on i think more people benefit from the generosity and the scholarships from that diversity fund now because they're funding projects that are going to go into making wordpress better for everybody the only thing on the flip side though makes me wonder 
is it going to limit people that apply to only developers yet again mm -hmm. and then say well how how does this work for somebody who's a designer or somebody who's a content or somebody who's in marketing that wants to give back to wordpress it might be harder for them to see how that that applies so i'll be curious to see once things do open up and we can start going to word camps and different things again if maybe it'll be kind of a a, a melding of the two like we fund some projects and we help some people get to events because I like, I really like the project thing because we'll all benefit from the work that those people contribute back to the project. But I think that is, is it going to be one more thing that's like, hi, we're just supporting more developers to work, you know, like right. a little community, right? So I'm really interested to see how they kind of manage that and then how it, it comes to fruition as everything kind of opens back up and events are a thing again. Anything from you, Joe? Uh, I just I I think it's it's great. You know, I think people are are cynical if they say, you know, like, oh, well, they're only do it because they're in it for them. Like, I mean, sure, maybe there's well, a benefit yeah, to them, right? Yeah, like I mean, uh, they're, they're not in business to be poor, guys. Yeah, right. It's like it's like how Calm has offered to like pay the fee for um, Naomi. I I I don't. I'm afraid to pronounce her last name, yeah. but the 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 tennis player from the French Open. Like, oh, uh, no one's. Been. Yeah. Advertising and goodwill. Yeah, right. You're like it's still helping people. And yeah. so, I, yeah, I, it's maybe a win win for, for both companies, but I think it's a bigger win for the recipients of the diversity fund who can uh, right. actually do cool things. And it's a, a bigger win for the greater community because now we're seeing more voices and more people and more projects. I think, um, I think you're absolutely right. I think it's great that they do it, they don't have to do it. This is a you know, it's it's a substantial amount of money each year that they're forking out. And honestly, I think it's OK if you are doing that philanthropically that you get to mention it from time to time yeah, um, totally. as a way of sort of saying, look, we you know, it's not just it's not just the plug in that we're selling. We're actually putting some of this money back and we contribute things to course. So I think you're absolutely right, Joe. Um, Paul, did you want to add anything further? Or yeah, do you the wanna... only, the only thing was just I mean, the, it's like Jennifer said, the impact that when someone has an idea rather than, uh, you know, I just want to go to this place and someone helps you get there. Imagine you have an idea, you're not sure if your idea is any good because you, you're underrepresented in tech and you're not getting much recognition anywhere. And then Yoast comes along and goes, hey, have a few thousand dollars or whatever it is that they, they give out. Suddenly the boost to that person, um, you know, mentally and their sort of self-esteem is going to be huge. So I think they probably yeah. can't impact as many people, but I think the way that, that people will be impacted will be bigger for uh you know pound for pound dollar for dollar i i just shared something in our chat i i i think i saw this this morning but the repository newsletter um noted that they announced uh yoast announced the recipients of the the fund oh, cool. and um they are across i just clicked out of it of course uh, <laughs> uh they volunteer across community polyglot support core docs and design teams so ah uh, see i love yeah, that yeah I love that it's across the different areas of WordPress, right? It Because that was my initial worry is like, oh, man, is this just going to be another thing? So I love that they put in that effort to cross multiple teams on core. And really, I do. I think I think this is a good I think this is a really good pivot because it is sending somebody to a WordCamp. That's awesome. And they get to have a cool experience. But. But funding a whole project that's going to maybe go back into core or another plugin that more people can use. This is something that's going to benefit like the, the ripple effect of this, of this fund, I think will be more wide felt. I've just, yeah, I've just scrolled through the repository email that Joe linked to and oh, nice. there's, yeah. there's nothing more for us to say, basically just pause the video, go and, you know, just, just slowly scroll through it with me and they've said everything it's uh this is such a good newsletter i'm very jealous when this comes out and thinking of all the time <laughs> they put into it but it looks like just quoting it, it says yoast care fund recipient announced yoast has announced 2021 yoast care fund recipients congratulations to ali nimmons forgive me if i butcher these people's names uh bego mario guard oh dear um how do we do that one um maybe people should just go and read it yeah go and look on the screen <laughs> 
because some some of those I'm so sorry that was awful I shouldn't have embarked on that without without actually at least scanning it first but uh, there's there's lots of people's names up there and it's very nice I think we can all applaud Yoast for their endeavors here thank you guys yeah that's awesome hmm. Next one, Paul, is changing tack a little bit, and uh, we we feel like we put our foot in it a little bit here, didn't we? Because we we sort of linked two things which maybe don't link, but we'll segue anyway. So I still uh, think there's something there, but okay. we'll 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 see. See how um, So yeah, Talkmag.io uh, just published an an article called "Why WordPress Agencies Are Embracing Gutenberg," and what this article is, it's kind of like a a moment in time snapshot of 15 different agencies that they've interviewed about who have switched from using, for instance, themes and page builder type setup to moving on to using Gutenberg and that kind of approach for building websites for their clients. So there's a couple of things about this article. The first one is, if you're reading this, you're like, oh no, well, well, I'm not doing that yet. Well, don't, don't worry, the, the title is slightly misleading and it's kind of almost suggesting that all the agencies are embracing Gutenberg. They're, they're not. It's just this is 15 agencies who have uh, responded to the, the call from TalkMag to, um, to contribute to this. But some of them are, and they share the reasons, the challenges, and and how they're doing it. And in summary, uh, so it's the, the 15 agencies that they spoke to, some of the reasons that they are switching were, big one was performance. So a lot of people have said that they found their websites have much better scores on Google. They just generally feel faster um, on the same hosting and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of people um, said that they had lost trust with previous third-party products. So um, not wanting to bash Elementor, but it was mentioned a couple of times in there. Elementor kind of got mentioned as a kind of comparison of, well, when we were with Elementor, it was kind of slow. Then we moved to Gutenberg and it was fast. And then again, they were mentioned because Elementor had a bit of a rough update with their version 3.0 that broke a lot of websites. Uh, so some agents said that they lost trust with that particular product and they felt that they could trust more with the core system of WordPress and going down that way and, and have less reliance on these third parties. Um, some people said that they found they had lack of the ability to for things like full site editing, not the official full site editing, there's the concept of being able to edit your whole site and things like dynamic um, data in websites, which again, isn't exactly true. If you use some of the main main uh, page builders, uh, Beaver Builder, Elementor, Divi, those have all got kind of full site editing and dynamic. But I think the thing is, is that a lot of um, agencies were probably using a huge array of different third party page builders that didn't have that kind of functionality. And they found that kind of functionality with Gutenberg. But one of the most uh, interesting things for me is that the article actually states that it, it was almost unanimous that a huge part, uh, a huge percentage of the agencies that had switched to Gutenberg were using Toolset in order, which is a, a plugin for WordPress, which helps you uh, build kind of more full dynamic websites. Ton of ton of them were using Toolset in order to achieve the things that they could achieve before with page builders. Toolset is a third party plugin, so they are reliant on that third party plugin, of course. But the cool thing about Toolset at the moment is we've covered this a number of times, is it really is at the moment leading the way for anyone who wants to create full dynamic archive views, single post templates, search and uh, search results, 404 pages, that kind of stuff with the block editor, with Gutenberg, with their favorite theme of choice, whether that's Generate Press or Cadence or something like that. Um, a few people were using Generate Press. Uh, I know Generate Press has now got some archive view, some single post view type controls using the block editor as well. So this kind of stuff is happening, but it does seem that you do at the moment until full site editing is good enough for these kind of agencies to jump on, you still do need a third party solution to do the things that you want. But it seems that people are more comfortable with using third party systems that are going with the flow of WordPress as opposed to doing their own thing and taking people off in a different direction. So uh, I found it super interesting. There's a few people we know in, in there in the comments. Um, there is some, some interesting comments in there as well. Uh, I'm trying to remember which one it was that caught my attention. Uh, 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 so, so there was a lot of people saying, that there's a still overwhelm. So if you do switch over, 
there's still a lot of overwhelm because there's such an array of choice of blocks. But one of the ones that was interesting for agencies is that a lot of agencies like to have their clients on things like care plans, which is a really advisable thing to do if you do run an agency where you are a freelancer. And what it's, it's there was a couple of cynical people in the comments saying that agencies will love Gutenberg because their clients will find it so difficult to use that they'll have to sign up to care plans. <laughs> but then there were some people who were kind of in response like, no, uh, we've actually found that uh, our clients preferred the simplicity of what we we're asking them to do than using uh, Elementor or a page builder, for instance. And I think that is because people are using Toolset and they're giving people pages with forms to fill in for their content. And they're using the block editor to dynamically put that content in different places. So they're taking their clients out of the page visual editing experience and making it easier for them. So very interesting seeing that people are making some very nice websites, very performant websites with the block editor. Wow, thank you. I feel like Toolset um, kind of went away a bit, I don't know, yeah. three or four years ago. It kind of lost its mojo. It, when I when I got into WordPress, it was it was one of the the hot tools. You know, it was a toss up between that ACF, MetaBlocks, and things like that. And but then it kind of lost its way a little bit, and it didn't didn't seem to catch up with the page builder crowd and the the groundswell of support that that gained. And then a couple of years ago, it looks like they put both feet into the Gottenberg pond and just kept going, and really went all in. And now they're now they're reaping the rewards of that investment in time. You know, they've took, put the page, the you know, the proprietary page builder thing behind them. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm quite surprised actually that that, that they featured so heavily because it <clears throat> they like I said they sort of became a bit a bit quieter than some of the uh, some of their rivals. But I'm pleased pleased to have them back. That's great. I knew on the inside that you know they were the ones capable of making that work for agencies. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize how much agencies had figured that out as well and we're all using it. Yep. So uh, that's interesting. Yep. I um, have either never heard of Toolset or I just assumed that people were talking about like the generic term, like, oh, I use a tool set or something. I don't think, wow. I don't think I've ever heard of this plugin before. So tool set is, oh. is a suite of, th so it's imagine ACF, but then, then roll in yeah. the ability to create actual views and uh, uh, do, customize the loop and things like that. And in the past you had to do that um, in, in WYSIWYG text boxes. So you had to wrap everything in short codes and provide mm. the HTML inside of a short code wrapper. And it, it worked. It was just a bit of a bit of a faff to get things. And mm. then page builders came along, made that entire process click, point, drag. And so they kind of got left behind. But it looks like they've put all of their tools into blocks. So now, for example, yeah. you can create a views block where you could create a custom archive by, by doing basically the same thing, but now by pressing things instead of having to copy and paste a multitude of short codes. So it's, yeah. it's really nice. It's quite an elegant solution, actually. And they've got a ton of custom blocks to, to achieve, I would say, almost anything that you wanted to achieve, actually. And, and they're one of the few people that I think have pulled it off inside of, uh, of Gutenberg as is. Nice. I'm yeah. Gonna, yeah, I'm going to check this out. It's amazing. OK. Yeah, yeah there's think, a lot there. Um, I think. Uh, I, I used to use Toolset a lot, and uh, when Beaver Thema came out, that was almost like a like-for-like -like swap. Mm -hmm. uh, so think Beaver Thema um, with the block editor. Gotcha. Uh, cool. So I think you'd like it quite a lot, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and then you were going to segue beautifully here, Paul, into uh, into some into something um, that Jennifer's been creating, but uh, we're not sure if it's the perfect segue anymore. So. <laughs> Well, clumsily yeah. segue. <laughs> Let's try it. So the segue was that this post on this about this technical thing for agencies and freelancers is all kind of related to me of the the change in environment at the moment. Mm -hmm. So you've always got to keep on your toes. The text changing. Should you jump to the block editor or should you stick with your tools? What should you focus your time on? And then at the same time. Uh, with all this tech change and you know big changes in WordPress and what tools we should or shouldn't be using, we've got things like Google Core Web Vitals, sort of with a kind of a, as a threat, making you kind of feel like, well, we do need a more performance sort of solution. And there's a lot of things that you that you could, if you were having a tough time, 
and you weren't sure what was wrong with your business at the moment, you might be able to convince yourself that the problem is, is that you're using the wrong tools and spend a lot of time focusing on tools to try and fix your business. Yeah. So <laughs> Je Jennifer Bourne is uh, putting the thumbs down to that. And my segue in a way, because we've got Jennifer on at the moment, is when I was kind of researching what you're up to at the moment, Jennifer, and the different products that you've got, I saw that you've got one called Pause, Pivot and Prosper. And I know that that's not really anything to do with technical things, but I have recently paused, pivoted and prospered. Basically, that's kind of been my uh, last sort of eight months uh, with, with the COVID thing going on and, and shutting down my agency and switching to freelancing. Um, now, um, what I wanted to do is just give you an opportunity to just talk about that because I know it's not a tech thing. But it does feel like there's so much pressure to figure out what you need to change to fix your business or to fix what you're doing at the moment. And to me, uh, we shouldn't get too focused on the tech. We should always be mindful of that the environment in the business world is changing around us at the same time. So that was my segue. Did that almost work, Jennifer? I think that worked. Yeah. <laughs> I think that worked. Yes. You know, pause, pause, pivot, and prosper was uh, a full day uh, live event I did. I invited in my friend Kelly Azevedo, Chris Lemma, Nathan Ingram, Corey Ashton, and we all delivered sessions focused around um, how you do business when you can't do business as normal, right? How do you continue to retain clients when clients are struggling themselves to make money, right? How to stay in business? How do you keep them paying you and position yourself as an indispensable partner, right? How do you continue to make sales when people are wondering if they can even stay in business? Some of those kinds of things. And we included templates and resources and all the things that we were kind of using to navigate those same things. So now it's available on demand, but it's one of those things that I run a program called Profitable Project Plan and Pause, Pivot and Prosper came out of a lot of questions I was getting from agency owners and freelancers and Profitable Project Plan about, how we navigate this change, right? And how we go through that. And so Pause, Pivot and Prosper came out of that. And along with those conversations and things, I think what's really interesting about that, that torque, uh, that torque article is that like, I feel like with the block editor, WordPress core has said, like, if you're a Mandalorian fan, this is the way, right? <laughs> this is the way, this is, this is how it is. Right. And, and continuing to say, oh, I'm not going to, I don't like Gutenberg. This, you know, it's a pain. I'm not going to use it, whatever. You're consciously diverging from the WordPress way, right? And these page builders were really amazing for, for people to, to give them more control over complex page layouts and to do things that weren't possible with WordPress. But moving forward with even full site editing on the horizon and blocks and all of these things, we're able to do more with WordPress core and do it the WordPress way. What I have found with the agencies and the freelancers and profitable project plan with my own direct clients, with the agencies that I work with direct is the more things you are spread across working on, the more time it takes to revisit that code base. How is this built again, right? If you're working on, you have one site in Elementor and one site that's Genesis and one site uses Beaver Builder and one site uses this, it costs you more to work on because it takes more time to figure out, okay, how's this code base? Where are the things in this one at? How is this? So your profitability isn't as good when you're using all these different things. And the other thing is you're giving clients another thing to learn and another thing that's not WordPress core, which if they ever stop working with you, they have to find somebody that knows that same piece of software or that same page builder, right? So I feel like agencies that are slowly leaning into the block editor, because let's face it, it's not something you're gonna change overnight. That article was like, I built this one site, right? With the block editor. It isn't, we've gone all in and we're using no other tools. Let's be honest about this, right? They're probably still using other page builders too. They're just slowly leaning in and starting to make that transition. And as you do, I feel like you're giving clients what will be the WordPress way moving forward and giving them something that is, how will have a longer lifespan and be easier to get help with from other people, right? And give a more consistent experience to people across the board. 
right? And that's what I'm seeing in the conversations with people in my programs and, and all of that is they're not abandoning page builders. They're just leaning more heavily into how can we provide an experience for our clients that is aligned with the WordPress way? And how can we create something that they're not going to feel like they need to revisit or redo in two years or three years? Hmm. The um, I want to make sure that we announce what this is. This is what we're looking at on the screen at the moment is Jennifer's course, which, as she said, is now available on demand. It's jenniferborn.com. No E in born. No e. Um, and it's pause, pivot, and prosper with each of those words hyphenated. So jenniferborn.com, pause pivot and prosper and just before we just before we move on i wanted to move to your your main site um where you 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 outline all of the different things that you've got boy you are busy so now we're uh, now we're on the jenniferbond.com forward slash programs and courses again hyphenated and uh, and we can see that uh, she's fairly busy we've got the profitable project plan content creators club um confident comebacks boy i need to <laughs> I really need to I make use that. of some it's of good. your stuff. <laughs> I, I picked that up at one of the events you were a speaker at, Jennifer, I think. I think you gave it away as a freebie. Mm -hmm. Very as, cool, very cool. As, Which is what to say to clients or customers when they send you tricky emails or something like that, you know, how to get yourself out of the uncomfortable, stressy feelings. Very good stuff. There's a whole boatload of content on there. Can I ask you, Jennifer? Did did the did the profitable project plan? Did, was that a direct result of COVID, or was it just a more general feeling oh, God, you had, no. and COVID was just the catalyst? None of this had anything to do with COVID. Okay. Profitable right. project plan stemmed from um, like twenty in the early two thousands, right? My business was growing really crazy, right, and I was. Um, overwhelmed to say the least, right? With more business than I could handle. And I didn't really have good systems and processes. And I took the time to build out all the systems and processes and automations and client communications and resources and everything I needed to run my projects and work less. I had two little, little kids at the time. I mean, now they're big, but they were little at the time. And um, I needed to work less, but I didn't want to make any less. I didn't want to make any less money. <laughs> so, so I needed to build all of these things to facilitate client education and client management and running my projects more smoothly and increasing my profit margins on my projects, right? And Profitable Project Plan was all of that that I created. Um, and then when Chris Lemma had invited me to come speak about it at WordCamp LA, everybody started asking, well, can I have this? Can I buy this? Are you selling this? And I'm like, no, I'm not selling this. It's like hundreds of hours of work. Are you crazy? And I said no for for years, right? Because I created, I rolled it out in my business in early 2011. Um, and then 2016, I was on vacation at Chris Lemma's house. And he was like, write the sales copy by the time I get out of this meeting. And I'm like, okay, so I did. <laughs> <laughs> but but we ran the beta in 2016 and then it's I've been running the program ever since and it just keeps growing each year based on what people are asking about and what they want, you know, training on and things. But it's 35 weeks of live training, live lessons, live Q&A, co-working, hot seats. It's a 10 month long program that runs from January through October. Wow. That's yeah, amazing. honestly, Paul. Yeah. There are some people, aren't there, who just, you know, they're just busy and effective. And uh, and we've got two of them on the show, and it's not me or you. <laughs> mm. I can make things look nice on screens. Yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, on, on it, let me just mention that URL um, one more time. It was actually really nice because Matt Davis dropped it into the, um, mm. into the comments there. So it's pause, pivot, and prosper. And then once more, if you go to jenniferborn.com forward slash programs and courses, you can find a Nobody's boat. Nobody's ever seen that page before. You guys are the first ones. Ooh, <laughs> scoop. Ooh, check it out. I'm the rolling out a new <laughs> website the weekend of like the 19th and 20th. And so I'm having to build out the pages that are on my new website. <laughs> So nice. I've built it out, but it's hidden and nobody's ever seen it. You guys are the first ones. Was <laughs> I allowed to show that? I'm really sorry. Yeah, if I... yeah. Oh, good, good. Right. Okay. Because you put it in I the mean, comment. I thought it was it's yeah. searchable. Yeah. It's okay. That's great. Oh, that's. I lovely. like the ampersand in pause. Whoa. pivot. I'm looking, I'm looking. Where am I seeing the ampersand? Oh, on the, the pause, pause pivot. pivot. Yeah. Oh, let me go back. Let me go. Yeah. Nice. That is a nice mm -hmm. logo, isn't it? Yeah. 
emphasis on the prosper. Nice, really cool. Um, we aren't we aren't just joined by one creator this week though, because Joe Casabona is equally, um, you know, he's making a boatload of content, especially in the good equally. Oh, well. But I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. T -t 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 take it. Just, just take the compliment. Um, he's uh, he's making lots of content in the Gutenberg space, but uh, this week a really nice piece of content came out. So you know, as he's on and it came out this week, this felt like a really nice time to do it. It's actually something that I'm really into. And Joe, although we won't get onto the content for another thirty seconds or so, I know that you had Leslie Sim on. Um, to, with her newsletter glue plugin, I've pivoted over to that. It kind of looks like everywhere I'm going these days, everybody's moving over to that plugin. I think it's a really nice thing, but that plugin has kind of moved into the block pattern space. You're now kind of creating template, which are templates which are reusable as block patterns. You drop them into a post or a newsletter content type, and you can create your um, your own newsletters and make them you know configurable exactly how you want them. But of course, the the creation of block patterns is kind of still a little bit tricky for a lot of people. So this week, I don't know if I've captured you at your best uh, on this exact slide. I just paused it at some that's point. No, that's <laughs> that is that's perfect. Right there. That's as good as it gets. Okay, um, I tried really. I stopped it multiple times. There are many that were worse than that. You know, I, like I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. That was a good one. Um, and and this week, Joe was talking about how to actually create a block pattern. It's about fourteen minutes long. There's very little that somebody wouldn't be able to understand first time through. You just pause it at various points. Are you are you kind of into this? Are you really keen on the block patterns thing? It feels to me like along with reusable blocks, this is going to be the metaphor for building almost everything into the future. Yeah, absolutely. And I've I've talked about this a little bit. I applied to speak at um WordCamp Santa Clarita with a, a talk about what theme developers need to um think about moving forward in the full site editing era. And I think block patterns are at the core of that. We've heard, um, uh, you know, we've heard various people on the core team talk about it. And I just redesigned one of my websites and I wanted to use a few block patterns. Um, and at this point, well, at this point, officially supported in core, you, you do need to add some code to, to add those block patterns. I think Justin Tadlock just released a plugin to help you do that without code that I'll probably put up on the YouTube channel later this week. Um, but yeah, I, I was, I was kind of surprised. Um, I did this first on my live stream. Uh, and so people who attended my live stream got to see me like struggle through what was happening. Cause all the tutorials I found uh, linked back to this JSON encoder. So uh, the TLDR of this is that you create the block in the block editor, switch to the code editor, copy the code and then you need to make it um uh like php code friendly by encoding it um and the the json encoder that every tutorial linked to no longer works for encoding block patterns or blocks. oh yeah so um i know it was super great luckily shout out to aj morris he was on the live stream in the chat that day and linked to a, a better one uh, and I figured, well, if I struggled this hard with it, and I'm like an act, like a developer, um, I should make a video about it. So the the working JSON encoder is linked there, and you add a plugin, register the block pattern, and then it's it's there for you to use. So, um, and I wanted to create a few for you know content upgrades and things like that for for my new site. I'm always surprised when I speak to people in the WordPress space. I'm always quite surprised by how many people just use WordPress and they've never strayed into the the boundaries of like creating a custom post type or adding any custom field. They just, you know, they made a they've made a business out of literally using WordPress and perhaps um, theming it slightly and you know selling off selling off blogs and you know, all of that kind of stuff. And so this this is a really nice new metaphor. The the idea basically is that you create something and then you can use it over and over again. And um, Joe's, Joe's nice straightforward example is kind of like a heading, a piece of uh, a corroborating text with a link and then a button. And he builds it in a page, sends it over to this escaper, escapes all of it, and then writes a few lines of PHP and uh, in his code editor, whole thing, is 14 minutes with Joe talking. So I reckon 
you know, if you've done it two or three times, you could probably get it down to two or three minutes. And it's just such a neat way of doing things. If there's any bit on your site that you think, I've built that more than once, then this is the time to start experimenting with this kind of stuff. And it's, yeah, it's a really nice video. Yeah, uh, thank you. And I'll just mention that the the code is uh, open source on GitHub, so you can just download the code and swap in your own blocks. But um, I'll also mention that like reusable blocks like almost do that, but um, you kind of have to do this weird dance, right, where you add the reusable block and then you make it an, an, a convert to regular blocks. And I've done that a few times with like mixed results where I wasn't sure. I accidentally like updated oh, the yeah. reusable block everywhere. Yeah. Block yeah. patterns will prevent that, right? Because yeah. they're not reusable. They're, they are inherently supposed to be edited and, and generic templates. Yeah, so you can drop it in and you don't have to you don't have to click that. I don't even know what that icon is. It looks to me like a copy paste icon, but it's the sort of yeah. dis disassociate. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. the wrong icon that, isn't it? It's just definitely copy paste. Yeah. And um and so yeah, go and check it out. Unfortunately, I can't really uh, tell you what the URL is because it's a YouTube URL and so it's, you know, it's complicated and long. But basically if you go to um if you Google create your own block patterns for Gutenberg stroke the block editor, let's just put it on the screen and then you'll be able to see. And you're looking for Joe Casabona attached yeah. to that. If you go to casabona.live, it'll take you to my YouTube channel. Oh, nice. And yeah, if there's not a live stream that week, uh, it'll just take you to the most recent videos. So do you, do you, when you do your lives, um, unlike this where we're talking to other people, is it is it just you're straight to the audience and if it goes well, woo, and if it goes really badly, that's that's just the way it goes. Totally. Yeah. It's like I nice. mean it's it's kind of working in the open. Um whatever I happen to be doing. Like this week I'll be working on my Gutenberg course. And so people will mostly see me like writing scripts and testing scripts like spoken words, not like code scripts. Um that is, that is very brave yeah. of you. Thanks. It's uh, I'm like really good at at recovering from like awkward situations. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've been on this show three times. And it's, uh, <laughs> we're we're always very awkward. Um, oh my god. Let's gosh. let's move on. There's oh, two... uh, just one thing. Oh, sorry, um, Paul. Yeah. Oh, uh, you mentioned Justin Taglock's um <clears throat> plugin for creating patterns because I've actually found that. Whenever I have uh, given uh, clients access to using a block editor for creating the content, I've always created patterns for them because I've seen them do really weird things where, where they've tried to create four columns and actually the button above the button below an image is actually nowhere is not even in the column sort of thing. They didn't really get it. Um, so the patterns is really useful. But there's another plugin very similar to what Justin Tadlock created. It's called Reusable Blocks Extended, and it's by somebody called uh, Let me just get their name. It's called. It's by John Baptiste Audras. Oh, can you put yeah. that in the um? Can you put He's that great. in the private chat, and I'll um, I'll put it yep. on the screen, and we can all see what it looks yep, like. Yeah, I'll find it. Um, in a oh, okay. I thought you had it on your screen at the moment. Don't worry if not. Um, and you found yeah, that one. Yeah, it's called reusable useful. reusable blocks extended, and um, and that. and also Joe uh, about your. Uh, I listened to your podcast, most recent podcast episode. Uh, more content that you were creating, and you were talking about the um, acquisitions, which we're going to come into in a minute. But just say thank you for the mention for uh, our show. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I I think I might have told you this offline, but I really enjoy coming on this show. We enjoy you can't having have him on again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we want him on. Um, we well, that's very kind of you. Yeah. It's um, back at you. Shed yeah. a tear. Uh, <laughs> that's really nice. Shall we move on, Paul? Have you managed to get that into the into the notes? Have yeah, I've just it? found it. Yep. Uh, is it in, in the private uh, chat or did you add it? Not to... yet. It's okay. coming. It's coming. If you're listening to this on audio, Ow. we're about to put something on the screen. It's <laughs> yeah, that was that was very really cool for the yeah. Just the listeners Here we go. There. That's right. Yeah, I uh, embrace the silence sometimes. There we go. It is reusable blocks extended. It's got a purple kind of logo, which looks like a little bit of rope or a W or something like that. <laughs> That's my technical definition of what that logo looks like. We've had lots and lots of comments coming in. Some of them just ridiculously <laughs> like, why is everybody on the bottom row got a cap? 
and why yeah. <laughs> everybody on the top row doesn't. Thank you for your uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, um, now I understand why someone said that uh, Nathan and Jennifer were spitting. I was trying it. to figure yeah. out what, what that, that meant. Were they? Yeah, it's because were... we were wearing a cap to stop right. the. So oh, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. just I was like, oh, that's a bit offensive. <laughs> and nice... now, I, now I get the joke. One of the nice new features of this platform, Streamyard, is that you can. I don't know how easily it works. Look, we can uh, look now. Now, now, all of it's oh, wrong. Wow. Now we've yeah. just complete. I we've feel spoke. uncomfortable now. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. You're in charge. You have the helm. Um, All right. <laughs> we're going to talk the, about the Yankees getting swept by the Red Sox this weekend. You, you it's now terrible. no longer have the helm. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't do sport. <laughs> <laughs> just don't do sport. But thank you for putting that in. Here's an interesting question straight at you, Joe. What's the most awkward thing you found yourself doing on a live video? Well, that... it might have been for Joe. Yeah, there. Um... There have been, I think, two very awkward moments for me where I just kind of talked through them. One was I accidentally exposed both my API key and secret <gasps> to my ConvertKit account, and you can't just change them. I had to, like, contact support, and they were like, yeah, we can't do that. And I ended up, like, rage <laughs> tweeting, and then Nathan Berry was like, we will get this fixed for you. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> um, and so that was, like, I was super nervous about that for the four people who were watching that stream that day. Um, and then the other was I did a, a, a webinar where I was like, I'm going to upgrade a, a, not a live site, a staging version of my live site to WordPress 5.0 live. So people can see exactly how the process goes. It was a WooCommerce site and it was on a hosting company that had blocked WordPress 5.0 from automatically upgrading. So the whole server crashed Uh <laughs> Or the whole WordPress is all crashed. And I just spent the hour like troubleshooting it and just talk. And I'm like, I'm really sorry, everybody. This is not how this was supposed to go. Uh, and then I did like a, a postmortem or whatever after the fact to figure out what happened. But I got so many nice comments like, oh, this is great. Like you we're seeing like what happens when like the absolute worst thing happens and how you troubleshoot it so it was an awkward situation that i was i was able to like talk my way out of this is great i can see a whole new uh, a horizon for me just making calamity wordpress videos yeah. <laughs> where great. i just totally <laughs> screw just everything up that. yeah <laughs> just literally because that is my default um in fact paul you can test it i've made very few yep, YouTube you made videos, a tool set video i made a tool set video ago, back in the day and man it was just a catastrophe from start it was great, to finish. Though. It, just, it just it just showed your personality though at the same time that you can really you know have a laugh at your own expense and still publish the video online yeah it was awful <laughs> but it was quite funny um i yeah. called myself a donkey about eight times um <laughs> there is over here a uh, da, 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 where's it gone oh this is nice todd jones what a nice comment your way joe he's really good at those live he communicates well with the audience he does, the best a, videos. He does a really good job they're enjoyable to listen to too i think you're yeah. like just calm and like well thank you very much so well done. thank you I really uh, and then there's that. there's some sort of like football related comment. We'll move swiftly on. We don't. So. <laughs> uh, uh, so. Just a point of order. I am <laughs> go, a Yankee get, fan. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I am upset by the sweep. We'll get you oh, next no. time. <laughs> what is it like? Forgive me, right? Because I realize that like sport is a big deal. So did something bad happen in the world of sport on your no, team? I mean, in the big picture, no. The Yankees got swept by the Red Sox, and the Yankees and the Red Sox are like a century old baseball rival rivalry. Oh. Uh so as a Yankee fan, I am I do not like the Red Sox, and I don't like when my team loses to the Red Sox. And when you say swept, was it a like a an uh, annihilation kind of it was a three game series? And the Red Sox won all three last night in extra innings. So, uh, yeah, and like overtime or whatever. Yeah. Do you ever think about moving to the, you know, swapping your elite? I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm just going to move on. But um, somebody, somebody asked me that's if like I. That's like blasphemy for Joe. Yeah, I know. Somebody <laughs> asked me if I would ever root for the Red Sox in the World Series. And I said the only time I would ever root for the Red Sox is if they were playing the Dallas Cowboys, oh. uh, which is an American football team. So they would never play each other. I see. Oh, I was going to say <laughs> the plot thickens, but no, yes. it doesn't. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. that um, Thank you. There is so. I'll sport recover. is a really big thing over here as well, but it, it, it tends to be. Well, obviously, baseball is, is. I don't know of any 
leagues or anything in this country yeah. it tends to be football related and probably somebody maybe in the comments will, will will highlight a terrible football result that happened this week but i don't know anything about them so on to what we're going to do we'll do acquisition news we've got two pieces this week shock shock of the possibly the year this this week came around and we discovered that acf the incredibly popular acf has been acquired by Delicious Brains. Jennifer is making a heart gesture. I second that. In fact, I'm going to give loads of them all over the screen like that. <laughs> it's a fabulous product created and supported over the last 10 years by a fabulous gentleman called Elliot Condon. And I use the word in its proper sense. You know, he is a really, really nice, gentle man. He's lovely. And he's been a custodian of this for 10 years. I, I can't think of a, of a of a time where he put a foot wrong in that it seems like there was just a massive groundswell of support for this plugin. It almost became like the, the default. Everybody loved it. All the page builders jumped on board. It made things so easy to do. It enabled me to do things in WordPress that I literally couldn't have done without it. And so at the at the point where he reached 10 years, he made the decision that he was going to move on. He was looking for custodians of the, the plugin. And I don't know if he was reached out to by various other people, but he settled on the team over at Delicious Brains and, and he sold it to them. Now, I think that's a cracking move. I wrote him an email to say, congratulations, well done. I'm really pleased for you. And I think he's really pleased too. He isn't the kind of guy I don't think who would just toss it to the highest bidder. Maybe they were the highest bidder. Maybe there were a number of bids. I don't know. But I think he he chose them because of who they are and the things that they've done before. They've got an incredible suite of different WordPress products. Yeah. But sadly, this week, we, we kind of got this slight take on it where some people, uh, uh, here's my take on it. The lifetime people, the, so the people who over 18 months ago had bought ACF, had bought it for a song, and they were they had it forever and ever, amen. Now, obviously, that's, that's not a particularly sustainable business model, but it is the business model that Elliot had for a very long time, like eight and a half years of that. He decided 18 months ago to make it a subscription model, but obviously he's got tens of thousands, possibly hundreds, maybe even millions for all I know, of subscribers who've just paid the, the smaller one-time fee and get sold. And of course, questions come around um, about what are you going to do uh, about the lifetime deal people? You know, you're not going to flip us over to subscription, are you? Now, I've got a feeling that if if you aren't somebody that like dwells on the pricing of WordPress products and you don't sort of frequent these lifetime deal communities, I think it's quite possible that the Delicious Brain guys literally didn't know that this tidal wave was coming their way, that they just thought, well, buy this plane. It's a cracking investment and we'll see what happens. Anyway, to cut a long story short, Twitter got both barrels out and started firing and and wanted to, you know, basically clarify things it can go two ways at this point you either you either sort of prostrate yourself and say everything's fine we'll honor it or you go the other way and alienate people none of it's none of it's great you know it's not a good place to be in but they they honored it within hours when they'd figure out the firestorm they honored it they put out a tweet they put out an email basically saying it's gonna be fine we're gonna honor everybody so it was a it was a story which lasted about six hours. It got very heated for a small period of time, and I really need a drink of water. We have to acknowledge the fact here, though, that, okay, so a couple things. They never said that they weren't going to honor the lifetime folks, which I am one, right? Like, we bought it forever and a day ago. But there was never, it was never said, we're not going to honor lifetime things. Like there was a, somebody that asked, and I think like if you look at the, the response back from Brad, right, it was, we hadn't really thought about this all that much. And somebody asked and I said, well, we're thinking about this. What do you think? But did it publicly? Somebody took that as a statement that they said, this is what we're doing and then tweeted it out. I which know. is not what he meant or what he said. So you got to kind of like, on one hand, you have to you have to think, 
did you really not think about this? Like, how do you get a plugin like that and not think about this? Yeah, it and is on the curious. other hand, you're, you feel a little bad for him because you're like, well, somebody misunderstood what you were trying to do, right? You were trying to like say, oh, we'll ask people, like, what do you think? And they thought, this is what you're doing? Screw you, right? And then all the pitchforks came out with how dare you ever make us pay one more dollar again? <laughs> you know, <laughs> we hate you. Do we know, was that email that got clipped and posted everywhere? I, in fact, I, th I think I saw that email from Brad, or it was a reply to an email querying the new pricing. Uh, and it, it was a private it, email. It was it a pro right. That, yeah, that it, was didn't go to, it didn't go to customers because I am I am both a Delicious Brains customer and a ACF customer who's Same. on the Lifetime Beyond. I okay, so so it was a screenshot of a, yeah. of a private email where it, it the way I read it, Brad was just checking out the water, like, what do you think? I mean, it, it yeah. ended with a question mark, right? It was a, oh, a query, and then sorry. everybody was like, ah! Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> can, um, can I just, yes, as the representative American East Coaster here, I'll, <laughs> that is such a trash move to take a, a private email and screenshot it and put it on Twitter. Like, that is, yeah. I'm just trying to publicly shame those people. And you know what? AC, I'm on the lifetime ACF. And if Delicious Brain said tomorrow, look, we got to move you to a subscription, I'd be like, okay. Same. Uh, you know how I much money I have made down. from eight? That's like saying, hey, uh, I'm going to rent a building from you for my store, and I'm only going to pay you once, and you have to pay utilities too. How ridiculous would that sound? If yeah. you have a tool that makes you this is like the matinee version of my podcast last week if you have a tool <laughs> that makes you money you should be happy to pay for that tool because how can you then turn around to your clients and be like hey i'm providing you some value and i'm going to charge you for it if you don't see the value in the things you use how can you expect people to see the value in what you do but the crazy thing was the conversation was people were saying like, hey, I would happy, happily pay for this again if you had communicated this a little bit better. And I'm like, they didn't communicate <laughs> they didn't anything. didn't communicate at all. What are you talking about? I think this is the point that I was trying to make a minute ago, whereas yeah. I think they've just stepped into something that they didn't even think yeah. was a thing. It was just that we're going to buy this plugin because we really like this plugin and this plugin's great and everybody uses this plugin and we want it really badly. And then just like, oh, oh hang on, there's more to this than meets the eye. And I wouldn't have seen, I wouldn't have anticipated that that email, which was, you know, quite benign, um, would have got put quite so publicly. And uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry, yeah. Paul, are, are you been sort of trying to get in, I think, maybe? No, I was no? just, okay. um, yeah, I already listened to Joe's podcast and that was really um, useful to see that uh, perspective. And, and um, like, I probably agree with more or less everything that um, everyone's saying here, but I can also see that uh, advocate for other people who aren't necessarily like us. So first of all, congratulations to Elliot and Delicious Brains. And I also think it did need a new home and that Delicious Brains is a really good home for that. I know that Sandhills was in the um, running. Yeah, Sandhills, Sandhills Pippin's company was in the running for it as well. I heard oh, really? that in the podcast. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, They're good and um, yeah, that would have been a good home. So I think um, I had offered he, it, he I offered him six pounds fifty, but he wasn't. He didn't, <laughs> <laughs> didn't want it. I was gutted. Yeah. Wrote him an email. I, well, I it was think really um, stroppy. <laughs> Have you have you finished? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think um, one of the things about uh, plugins when they get bought out or any company like that, especially at the moment, is you you tend to sort of see these companies get bought out when the the company's been run for like five to ten years, like this one has, and a product has been created, and then at some point the owner or the creator of that product is a bit fatigued with what they're doing and they want to. They want out basically, and they they want a good home for what they've done because it's it's you know blood, sweat, and tears that's gone into that, and they want to give it to someone else, and that, and then the people that buy products, whether it's hosting companies just looking to consolidate and stuff like that, they tend to not be fatigued and exhausted when they're buying these products. They they're buying these products, and they've got a five or a ten year plan for that product, 
that they'll bring it in, they'll do something with it, they'll look after it, they'll improve it, and then they'll sell it again uh, or they'll sell themselves again in five to 10 years um, for a significant. So it's just like a standard investment cycle. That, And then what you tend to get with the lifetime deal people, I mean, this isn't a typical lifetime deal. I know that this is different. This is going back 10 years. I got ACF in 2012 when yeah. it was not, it wasn't even one plugin. You had to buy multiple different yeah. parts to it. You had to buy the repeater and the flexible content part. And then I bought it again when it turned into the one-off plugin. But people who buy those sort of products in that com particular community, they see themselves as um, seed investors, basically. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, and what's happening a lot in that this lifetime deal thing at the moment is a lot of people are getting ripped off by companies and people are sensitive to it. And we're all getting a letter every every other day from some bill creator, that you know, some kind of utility bill that we have to pay for, that this has gone up and that's gone up and this is going to cost more money. So people are super sensitive to it at the moment. And, um, and like you said, I just don't think Brad realized what he stepped on. And it's so I don't have any negative uh, feelings toward Brad. I think he did a fantastic job of yeah, yeah. turning it around. Yeah. But I don't feel sorry for them. I don't feel the same as Joe exactly like that because we're community people. So we might meet Elliot or Brad at a word camp and hang out and have beers and stuff like that. And we're community people and we look out for each other and we care about, you know, that concept that you said, Joe, about, um, you know, you want that product to succeed. So you need to put some money into it. But the majority of the thousands of people who bought that plugin just saw an offer. The business offer was, this is the plugin. This is how much it costs. And they don't want their utility bill creator and their WordPress plugins to, to change the rules for them, especially if they've got 30 or 40 lifetime deals. And they're like, well, how many of these are going to turn into, am I looking at a thousand a month eventually when all of these lifetime deals that I've got, I can't, I can't feel sorry for all of them. Especially when well, the guy who sold it got loads of money and then the company is going to turn it into a future investment. And so let's just be that, honest, yeah. most of us that are talking about the fact that we would happily pay for this again are people that bought the lifetime access mm. like six, I seven, eight, nine, again. ten years ago. Yeah. And yeah. you've got a feel for the people that were on Twitter saying, hey, you did this big push for the lifetime. We're never going to do lifetime again one year ago. Right. right. And I, now that yeah. now they thought, wait a second. You're doing what? Like you've got to feel for those people, especially in this climate. Like maybe a couple of years ago, it wouldn't have been in that big of a deal, but we've just come out of like 18 months of what for some people have been an incredibly hard business climate, right? That yeah. they're watching every expense and every penny. And it's like, this is just the, this was the wrong time to have that yeah. kind of. Yeah. And I, I will say like unexpected business expenses are definitely unexpected. Any expenses, right. Are no fun. Yeah. Um, and I can definitely feel from, from that point of view, like uh, my bills are about to go up. Right. But you know, I, I collect these lifetime deals on app sumo or whatever, and I, I try them out and most of them are duds to be honest. Um, and if, if there's a lifetime deal, that's like, we're switching to a subscription model. I'm going to be like, that's their business. And if I don't feel I get the value out of it, uh, then I'm I'm not going to pay for it. I'm going to find something else. But like there was outrage when Elementor raised their prices to, I mean, it's still not that expensive, right? Like for the agency, if like a thousand sites for like nine ninety nine or something like that, like if you've got a thousand, like if you've got like 200 sites using Elementor, you're making that money back easy. Um, and ACF is the same, right? It's, this is when he raised his prices 18 months ago or whatever. There was an outpouring of people going, I bought the lifetime and I'm buying the subscription because that's how much value it brings me. So definitely not a blanket statement, but with ACF specifically, like it brings so much value to a lot of people that either like you should be like, okay, they need this. I need it. So whatever they need to do to keep it going because otherwise I'm going to have all this technical debt. I'm going to have to move to like pods or something. Not, not that there's anything against pods, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just picked a random one. Um, yeah. yeah. So, sure. There's you know. going to be pitchforks now, Joe. People I know. I know. Come get you. The, the pod, the pod people are going <laughs> to come for me. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Um, I'm, I'm really happy. It's gone that way. I, I think he's made a really great decision. Honestly, 
I've spoken to Elliot many times and he's just the nicest person. And I say that very sincerely. I, I feel so privileged to have met him and I'm, I'm really pleased it's worked out for him. The I remember back in whenever it was, let's say it was 18 months ago, that he went to the from lifetime to subscription. Remember he had on his on his website this this curve and it was kind of like 10 years ago and it was it was um years against support burden and it went like this and then it just suddenly started to creep up and then it literally went mm. up and it was going through the roof and the prediction was that it would just keep going so support and all of that was just going to become a huge thing so you need a team for that and um i don't know what elliot's plans are in the future i hope he stays within wordpress let's all cross our fingers but good luck elliot Enjoy uh, your uh, one enjoy thing I say about new owners, uh, delicious brains. I think there's still a way for them to to look at this idea of making more revenue from existing customers. I think um, they can create different add-ons that are not right. part of the of the same thing, and I think the majority of people would be absolutely happy with that. I think this is just shows how sensitive the community can can be and that's not a criticism of the community it's just kind of like look look how dry the wood is and it doesn't take much to to ignite things because we've had a bad couple of years we all want to support acf and honestly if they come up with some way of kind of giving them you know extra dev money and stuff like that then i'll definitely consider that at the same time we do have to consider you know they've bought this plugin as digital, digital brains uh they they in in five to ten years time when they've matured it, they don't want to you know go okay we've worked on this plugin for five years we're about to sell it and then Elliot goes hang on I've decided that uh, you guys need to pay me money every month uh, when you sell this product to the next person and 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 they'll be like no that's not the deal and um, so I think uh, I guess what I'm saying is that. Business is business when you buy something, but it doesn't mean that you can't reach out to that community of customers and go, hey, should we do something even better together? This is the history of ACF. Let's let's put some money inside. Guys, we're going to make some money out about this in five years, but you're going to get an amazing product that's going to be eclipse anything ACF has ever even done before. We've got eight developers working on this now rather than two. And um, so I think that's the direction that it should go. I don't think Brad should give up and go, oh my gosh, we can't ever ask those people for any money anymore again. Because the the people that where it blew up was a, a kind of small, a, it was the 1% of the of the 1% sort of thing, you know, that care about yeah, this kind of thing. Yeah, good point. And, and then it just escalated on social media as things tend to do. <laughs> I, th I think Brad should worry because... Uh... I've just started a new plugin and it's called Very Advanced Custom Fields. Whoa. Wow. Oh, I know. Whoa. I know. They're going to you know, be so advanced. Yeah. You know, if Elliot <laughs> NFT'd uh, the AFC code, yeah. Yeah. you know, he would get money every time it yeah. got sold or whatever. Yeah. That <laughs> stuff I, is that right? crazy. NFT? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just bonkers. I literally yeah. can't get my head around that. That people pay yeah. like life changing amounts of money for a digital token, which can, as far as I can see, means nothing. I don't get it. I it's literally... so weird. <laughs> yeah, it makes no sense. It's literally it, yeah. like me giving you a piece of paper and saying it's 50,000, 100, 50, maybe 300 for that. You can photocopy it and give it to whoever you want, but you have the original. Yeah, you got the original. I got the first yeah. tweet. Yeah. yeah, have Brad Williams on. He like buys NFTs like every uh, night. That's like, okay. His, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably be wrong. Um, right, last one. We'll both one, be wrong. <laughs> let's let, yeah. Let's make this the last one. I admit, one I know nothing. Yeah, you know, stay that way about this. It's yeah. a silly thing. <laughs> um, it, it is a silly thing, as Monty Python would say. I think that's the first time I've quoted Monty Python. Moving on, iconic WP. You're doing this one, aren't you, Paul? Is that all right? Uh, yeah, sure. So iconicwp.com is a suite of, I think, 15 WooCommerce related plugins. And they've been acquired by Stella, Stella WP, which is the new brand name that, that uh, Liquid Web has kind of put out there to, to be the brand that sort of holds all its uh, plugin IP as such. And Stella WP now has iThemes, Restrict Content Pro, Give WP, 
the events calendar, Cadence WP, Icon It WP. So, I mean, what a what an amazing suite of it is plugins, Stella, isn't it? It really it is Stella. Is. It's a good yeah. name, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it does say on their website actually it gives you an idea of the direction they're going to go. They've got in a huge font. I think it's on their um, homepage somewhere. If you click on the logo, it probably take you back to the. Um, uh, just just telling you how WordPress websites work. <laughs> yeah. um, if you if you scroll down a little bit, it says somewhere we're obsessed with commerce. It's a little bit further down than there, I think. There you go. There, and so that that kind of to me kind of uh, so says says everything that the direction they're going to take is this WooCommerce direction. I think Joe, you might have said on your podcast uh, when you could so good uh, definitely listen to Joe's latest podcast because he's talking all about the concept of acquisitions and and the why and what it means to us and and all the different companies and everything. But I think Liquid Web have a WooCommerce specific hosting package. They've got all these plugins. They've just bought. Um, iconic WP. So the chances are you're going to see a product from their hosting range that includes free access probably to a bunch of these different plugins so that basically this hosting company can push out solutions, ready-made solutions and packages for people. Um, another amazing acquisition, some serious talent on, I, under, under this umbrella now it, it was James... probably nothing like it actually i think this is yeah, the yeah, yeah. biggest collection of big names uh that i can imagine the, the one other thing i'll just say sorry nathan was that no, no. if you look at uh the, these kind of acquisitions that the hosting companies are making they tend to be solutions for end users acf is quite a different one really because it, it's it's a it's a high level one and i think we probably just don't hear about a lot of the other ones that are for developer tools acf is more of a developer tool uh, so delicious brains, you kind of wonder what they've got planned for that, and that, that's that's why I think you have to kind of come in and say, can we get in and help them move that forward? Whereas with Stellar do repeat, they're clearly buying things for their end users and creating packages. So, yeah. um, Joe and Jennifer and Nathan, I don't know what you've got to say about this, but an I'm amazing. I'm just going to quickly say this: we had James Kemp on the podcast. Oh, I don't know, I'd make like oh, he had him on this podcast, but we also did, on yeah. the just the audio yeah. podcast, um, and. Really nice guy, another really nice humble guy. Um, but I kind of, I kind of feel that maybe he, he uh, I have to describe this. Um, I don't want to say anything inflammatory. Um, it had gone perhaps a little bit under the radar. It, it wasn't quite as off on the tip of everybody's tongue. So I wonder if pushing it towards Stella will just give it like the boost that it deserves. Because if you go and look at, I don't know if the uh, iconic website, the old site is still up. I'm guessing it probably is. Yeah, it is There's yeah. a iconic ton of good stuff there. There's a boatload of great things to do with WooCommerce there. And, um, and I'm, I'm pleased for James. I'm really, really happy for him that he's managed to sell it on and to another great custodian. So I'll shut up Jennifer or Joe. Well, I think what I, what's interesting about these two acquisitions is I think they went to the, to the places that they make sense, right? Like Delicious Brains is known for their developer tools. I mean, WP Migrate DB Pro, like how do you not even use that, right? That's just synonymous with, with building. And to, so to have someone who's already committed to building really high quality, good tools for developers take on ACF made a lot of sense, right? And there's some extra trust built in there. Yep. And then having Stellar WP from you know Liquid Web and Nexus taking iconic WP into that, into their fold, right? And pulling that into their offering. It is, it's for site owners and users. And we've already seen kind of liquid webs investment in to e-commerce when Chris Lemma went over there, like they really pioneered the idea of WooCommerce hosting and WooCommerce um, packages for users that had all of these things built in to help you run a better online store. They're, you know, you sign up for a WooCommerce hosting plan and you've got analytics and you've got all of these things already built into their WooCommerce hosting plans. And you look at the, the plugins that they're bringing in, right? Bringing in Iconic WP, bringing in Give. These are all things that users need to be able to do e-commerce, right? To be able to take donations and support nonprofits or improve their e-commerce site and sell more money through their site and make more transactions and improve user experience. And I think we've seen that with 
Liquid Webs with rolling out their store builder, right? One click, spin up an e-commerce store. Yeah. We're dropping yeah. in sample content. We're dropping in sample images. Like you pick your niche, you pick your thing, you hit a button and you have a site ready to edit. So I think it's looking at the acquisitions. Like sometimes you look at an acquisition and you're like, that was weird. Like that, yeah. that I didn't see that. But these really make sense. If you look at kind of what these companies do, and kind of what their goal is moving forward. You know, that whole idea of we're obsessed with commerce, right? Leaning into making, making owning and running and building an e-commerce site as easy as possible with WooCommerce, that's where their focus is. So this to me makes tons of sense. Just before we gave Joe a chance to speak, I'm just going to put his um, his podcast episode up. Uh, there we go. That's the one I think Paul was, you were just mentioning. Um, how I built dot it so not how i built it how i built dot it like an italian website ah joe casabona i that was my attempt at being <laughs> italian i'm so embarrassed that was good, that was uh, good. <laughs> yeah anyway there you go there's a podcast episode uh released really recently called what do acquisitions in the wordpress space mean joe if you've got anything to add we'll um hand it yeah over. absolutely so and uh, there's a short link to that wpreview.io will just take you to like that part of the website so you don't have to remember that ridiculously long url um but first of all um i think that probably delicious brain should change their homepage. the headline should be how do you not even use that i think that's perfect <laughs> um <laughs> because it's so true uh but i mean with respect to um uh, stellar wp and and liquid web and and nexus i mean jennifer made all the all the perfect points here right they have managed woocommerce hosting they just rolled out a store builder i made this point uh for the first time a few weeks ago on this podcast where it seems like each hosting company is picking their their niche or their niche and they're digging in right yep, yep. wp engine is targeting designers probably right because they bought studio press they bought flywheel which was like designer specific hosting really um godaddy is focusing fully on woocommerce Nexus, Liquid Web, they're focusing on a bigger commerce picture. They were the first ones to roll out uh, something like managed WooCommerce hosting. But then they also bought uh, Restrict Content Pro, Give WP, WP Complete, I think, was that the, rings one, a bell. Yeah. the other one that they It's like it helps you build courseware without an LMS, pretty much. Um, mm -hmm. And so they're focusing on what are the ways that people make money online and how can we make that easier? And rolling, I mean, Iconic has just some really fantastic, really nice. yeah, really fantastic plugins here that make specific things in WooCommerce a lot easier. Wish lists for WooCommerce, WooCommerce account pages. Do you know how much code you have to fight to like make the account pages or like the checkout page look better than you want it than than it is out of the box like so yeah it, yeah right and so these these plugins i think will be great value adds for their managed woocommerce um customers managed woocommerce hosting we got to call it that um managed woocommerce hosting customers um but i i wouldn't be surprised if we start to see some of those tools uh, kind of uh, collaborate a little bit more, right? With with Research Content Pro uh, or with GiveWP, and you have this this big kind of choose your own adventure e commerce store builder thing. Oh, I like the way I like that. Choose your own adventure. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we That's all like nice. choose your own adventure books yeah. for sure. Yeah, do any of you? Um, I don't know if you know, uh, David McCann is is listening on in uh, on the comments, or, and uh, I noticed in his uh, Facebook group, um, he uh, got an email from um, Elementor, which isn't a personal email. It's just like a you know to all the customers who signed up to the early announcements about Elementor's um, kind of platform building ambitions. And Elementor have released their pricing actually for their hosting. Their, oh yeah, uh, I didn't yeah. So in. to yeah. get a hosted hosted solution with Elementor Pro pre installed on there is um, the, the typical price is just under twenty dollars per month, uh, but they're giving early bird access for ten dollars a month. Or I'm not sure if that's like just a year or something. Um, but any thoughts on Elementor in this um, in this kind of empire building? thing at the moment 
I feel I, like I feel like buying Elementor as a site, like on a SaaS, right? Buy it, get it, host it. You're moving almost more towards solutions like Squarespace, mm. right? Where or WordPress.com or something like that, where it's less about buy this page builder to work on your theme and do things, but here's a different, an all-in-one solution. Like I feel like that's more of a move with a long-term game on something yeah. like becoming a WordPress.com or a Squarespace or something like that. Mm. Their pricing is quite similar to Automatic's WordPress.com's yeah entry level business packages so you it, it, you could you could say they're going head to head with wordpress.com it's kind of like we you're both using wordpress yeah. you can go this way or you can go this way uh or you can go to squarespace and wix or something <laughs> but, but yeah you know it's the same kind of idea of yeah. pay the monthly fee and it's there ready for yeah, you to your build, solution right? just press the buttons yeah. yeah it feels like liquid web and some of these other hosting companies are saying no you are totally aware this is wordpress you wanted wordpress you're going in on wordpress and you you're in there because you you know you, you know you've heard that wordpress gives you all these options uh, so it seems that they're going in a slightly different direction. So, do you remember yeah. years ago, Studio Press bought out what was the what was the product called? But they completely removed the WordPress UI, and it had a oh Rainmaker. It, that was it, Rainmaker. Yeah, it didn't quite, kind of quite work out, and I I feel that 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 might be the way that Elementor may be going. I don't know. You know, just sort of it's just Elementor. You've got an Elementor site, and you log in, and you get the Elementor user interface, and it's slightly different. I don't know. I don't know. Time will tell. Yeah, that, that seems like yeah. an interesting... I don't. I mean, maybe they have data that backs this up, right? But Elementor's problem in the beginning was they gave too much away for free. Uh, it didn't really encourage people to upgrade to Pro. But the people who were upgrading to Pro were the people who were building websites for other people. I don't know. I, I mean, I, it would, I think it would take a big marketing effort to reach outside of those people uh to the to the wix people or to the squarespace people or to, to find that alternative because i i feel like uh elementor's core audience is really designers who don't want to spend their days like coding nice landing pages or something like that. that's like an oversimplification of course but um it's it's the the freelancers or the agency owners as their pricing reflects um well, i think that was rainmaker's problem Right, Copy Blogger had a huge a huge audience, and I think they thought, "Ooh, let us build our own website platform, and we'll be able to roll in the dough with all these monthly subscriptions." So they forked at WordPress, right? Rebranded the entire thing so it looked nothing like WordPress. It really didn't the look like was, WordPress, did it? Yeah. No, and their their like crazy evangelist Copy Blogger fans were all in. But once you got outside those people, other people that bought it, like we had several people that hired us to build custom themes for Rainmaker. And I would log in and I'm like, what is this mess? Yeah, it's like, blue. It's blue everywhere, blue and white. Place. Yeah. I can't find anything. Nothing looks like what I'm expecting. Like things are in weird places and they're hidden. And it was so much work to work in that because they tried to make it something so different from WordPress, which fine if you're the people in that community but once you get outside that community and your people are expecting something like wordpress because it's studio press and it's copy blogger mm -hmm. and they're in that space and they log in and they're like this is i i don't even know i don't even know what to do with this mm -hmm. right so at least elementor has has a similar user experience right to what yeah. And yeah. I mean, maybe they have customers who are like, hey, this is great if I didn't even have to think about hosting, right? Or if I could just sign my client up for an Elementor site, right? Like make me an affiliate and then I'll make money from, yeah. Like I would imagine yeah. that they've that's run the good, numbers and worked out option. that there's enough yeah. of those. Yeah. Elementor, yeah. if you haven't thought of that, I, I want like 5%. Yeah. <laughs> you, you heard it here first. And can I have just, I don't know. One percent. It is a good idea. For his it idea. A, <laughs> it's a flywheel. The flywheel sell on your hosting model, but with the entire yeah. solution as well, isn't it? So, yeah. um, well, I tell you what. If about Rainmaker, we can ask uh, Brian Gardner. Uh, he's agreed to come on the show in the next couple of weeks or months. We haven't agreed on a date yet, but he's going to come on the the show. Ex um, owner of Studio Press. So we can ask him about what he thinks about Elementor's plans in relation to Rainmaker.
Interesting. Nice. Yeah, yeah we'll, comes on. We'll, get the, we'll get the skinny. Um, <laughs> right. We've used up far too much of you good you good people's time. Uh, we've run over by about eight minutes. I apologize for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on, uh, Jennifer Bourne. What's the best place to find you, Jennifer? I know we've probably gone through this, but you never know. Somebody might be listening right at the end. Where, where can we find you best? JenniferBourne.com. That'll do it. And Joe? Casabona.org. Nice. And uh, Paul? I guess you can look at paullacy.digital. Oh, nice. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was, there we go. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We'll be back this time next week, 2 p.m. UK time every Monday. This week in WordPress, we'll be back. And uh, have a nice week. Stay safe. And uh, we'll it's see time you soon. for the wave. Oh, yeah. We've got to do the awkward wave. Fine. Jennifer doesn't know about this. You've got to Let's wave awkwardly. And we don't on, know Jay. how long it's going to last.